Hey there, Claire Winslow here, uh, working with my gel plate again, and just wanted to show you kind of some quick methods with using found objects and your 8x10 plate and some printmaking paper or cardstock. I have here uh, this crocheted piece that I found in a thrift store and um, things like that make really good printing materials. We're going to use uh, block printing ink today, which is not one that I, something I usually use, but it works perfectly well. So if you have block printing ink, uh, please feel free to use it. So I'm just going to use basic colors here, some blue, red, black, some yellow. And uh, the difference between using this and acrylic is you want to roll it out on the side on a piece of old plexiglass or some wax paper or something like that. Um, and you need your brayer, of course. This That label of blue looks a little bit different, but they're all speedball. I think one is slightly old, but it still works fine. And so you don't need a lot of ink. That's the nice thing about block printing ink is you don't go through it very fast. So it's pretty economical. The other nice thing about block printing ink is that it um, is slower to dry because it's made for printmaking techniques where you need more time. So you can roll it out and apply it to your plate and it should give you a little bit of time uh, before it dries. The colors tend to be pretty basic, but you can always mix them. Um, I seem to be running out of the black here. But you can mix, like if this blue is a little bit too strong, I can tone it down with some black or another color. In this case, I'm going to use a little bit of black. And I'm going to mix this on my piece of plexiglass here before it goes to the plate. You can use a spoon or a um, uh, any other flat tool, um, palette knife, whatever works for you here to mix it together. But make sure it's well mixed. And then when you get the color you like, you'll be ready to um, use your brayer. Might take a minute or two of mixing. But that's worth doing well. So, all right, and get your soft brayer. Remember, we want to still use our usual soft brayers. And you want to brayer it on the plexiglass till you get a nice, thin, even coating on your brayer. And here I am picking off a few dried bits. Um, if you're using acrylic, the dried bits might not matter, but when you're using printmaking inks, everything shows. So it's a slightly different effect. It's more subtle and every little mark shows and every little line shows. So it's a little more finicky, but you get uh, your reward is you get these nice, thin, subtle layers uh, that can really only be found with printmaking ink or golden open acrylics I sometimes like to use too. So you want to try to get a nice, smooth uh, layer. You can see it's kind of translucent. This is normal. Um, sometimes it's challenging to get a smooth layer on a gel plate because the gel plate's kind of uneven. But do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the, even those little small marks that I've got on the plate, those are going to show in my print. I'm not too worried about it, but if you're a perfectionist, um, you might want to practice this. And another thing is if you keep rolling it over and over, eventually you'll start to pick up the ink on the plate. So you don't want to overdo the rolling part. So I'm going to get my crocheted piece here. Looks like something I got from Grandma's attic, but it's cool. It's the perfect thing for gel printing. And I'm just going to lay it down and not fuss with it too much because you're already making a pattern in the ink, right? So I'm just laying that down. And I'm going to, um, I want to make the pattern in the ink, but I also want to remove the ink that's in the background. So what I'm doing here is I'm not making a print exactly, I'm just removing in preparation for making a print. So I'm just kind of firmly but gently rubbing to remove the ink in the background and get like the silhouette of the shape. 
So this might take a minute or two. You don't want to go too long because your ink will eventually dry, but a couple minutes. And the more you press, the more you're going to lift some ink inside the shapes of the crocheted piece as well, which you might want. So you can see I've lifted up the background paint ink. Um, I'm not, this is just my scrap paper. And I'm going back to remove some of the residue, which you can see stays around the edge. You can keep going and get rid of that with a dry, clean part of your paper. That looks pretty good. And then we lift up our crocheted piece and you can see you've got this beautiful imprint. It's not perfect. There's a little bit of a line going through and that's where my brayer was kind of uneven, but that's okay. We can touch it up later. So now you have your printmaking paper or your cardstock and you just line it up with the paper underneath. I always advocate putting your 8x10 or 8.5x11 or letter size sheet underneath your plate that's the same size as the one you're printing with. And that's just a simple registration method. So here you want to rub pretty well to transfer the image. And et voila, looks pretty good. All right, that's nice. And a tiny bit of ink still left on the plate, but that's okay. I don't have to deal with that right now. I'm thinking ahead to, maybe I want to add a second color to the background. So I've brought back my crocheted piece and a piece of newsprint, and I'm going to make a mask, nothing complicated, just the basic shape around the crocheted piece. And this is just going to be a paper mask, and it's going to block my second color of ink. So this is kind of rough but I'm just cutting out the similar shape to the crocheted piece. And then once I have that piece, I'm going to ink up my plate again with a second color. I think I'm going to use a, a complementary color to the blue. Okay, so we got to look at that. Do we have kind of an approximate shape? Because you see those triangular shapes on the right and the left, that's what I want a second color to be. I don't want the orange to go over the whole thing. So I can just simply block where I don't want the ink to go. A little more fine tuning. I mean, you can get very precise with this if you wanted to, but for the sake of the video, I'm doing it kind of loosely. And I don't mind if there's a little bit of white showing. It depends on how careful you want to be here. Okay, it gets close. And I'm only up going to apply ink to the top of the plate, you know, the top and the middle, because I'm not printing on the bottom. So there's no need to put ink everywhere because you're not going to be using it. So again, I'm taking my new clean piece of plexi glass and mixing some orangey color with my palette knife as a contrast with the blue. And also this is, in the meantime, my print is drying somewhat and I think it'll be dried enough to work on again. Okay, again, you want to use your brayer and you're kind of um, rolling it and lifting it up at the end to get a smooth coating on the brayer. Do the best you can here. And I'm only applying ink to the top two-thirds. Again, it's somewhat translucent. That is normal. 
Okay, we are ready to print. So I'm just going to block, roughly block the area where I don't want the ink to transfer to the print. Move my wet paint out of the way. And then go ahead and print. And just don't move anything around. It usually doesn't. Okay, that's pretty good. It's a little more white than I intended. You can always go back and do it again. It won't hurt the print. So I think I might do that. I'll just uh, apply some more orange ink and maybe make my mask a little bit different because I kind of forgot that when you print it's a reverse image so it's not a perfect triangle here. So I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time and that is I'm going to okay, redraw my mask I'm going to redraw my mask and this time in order to get it kind of in the right location I'll be a little more precise. I'm going to actually, I sometimes do this, I'm going to leave the newsprint on the print, apply my ink, just to get a little bit more orange around the edges. Okay, and now I'm going to leave that newsprint on the ink and just hold it with my fingers. I'm not going to tape it down or anything. I'm just going to make sure it's all in position, matching the top paper to the bottom paper. So the same thing I did before, only this time um, I allowed for the reversal of the image, so it should be a little bit more precise. Yeah, it's pretty good. You could always touch these up later, you know. I don't think I want to keep printing on that. But what I can do is take a brush. Sorry, I'm a little bit off camera. And then just kind of touch up that edge if that white is bothering you a bit. There's no reason why you can't go in and paint it a little bit. Yeah, that looks nice. So after looking at the print a few minutes, I think I decided I wanted to try printing another layer on top using the same... Um, the same crocheted piece. So maybe what would happen if I put an orange on top of the dark blue? Hmm. I'm always trying something new, so it's only a print. We can't hurt it. Just try it. A little more red this time. So just at the middle part of the image, not the whole thing. And I don't mind if it's a little bit rough here. I just wanted the suggestion of some kind of pattern at the bottom. And I think I'm deciding, what if we run it a different direction? How about horizontal? Okay, same thing. Same thing we did before, so we're going to remove that background. Using our newsprint. I mean, you could really just keep going with this if you wanted to. You could just keep making layers and layers, but um, at a certain point, you know, the, these colors are limited, and after a while they don't mix that well together after about three or four layers. So I usually try to keep these block printing inks kind of simple. And just maybe three colors is good, sometimes four, but three is good here. Again, trying to get a sharp edge. Okay, uh, the ink application was a little bit soft at the bottom there, so we might not get a complete uh, print, but that's okay. We'll get some. So let's line that up again. 
and see what we get. This will be a sort of a lighter orange on top of the darker one, so I'm not expecting it to be super bold or anything, and it isn't. Okay, printed better on the top than on the bottom. But you got a layer of transparency over the top of that. I think it needs something else. I'm thinking, you know, maybe it needs a dark on the bottom. So usually in between layers, I'm kind of staring at the prints, figuring out, well, what should I do next? And I'm thinking maybe a dark. So I do now, at this point, I've got a couple of layers on here. I want to make sure it's dry before I add my final dark. So you saw me do a little bit of blow drying just to speed that up for the video. And I want a black, but my my black seems a little dry here. The ink, I mean. If it doesn't come out very much, I might need another a new tube. I have another tube here. Let's find it. Oh, by the way, sometimes this ink needs um, needs kind of squeezing before you open up the tube because it can settle if you haven't used it in a while and it can separate. So squeeze it around a little bit before you open it up. Yeah, this one looks better. It's the consistency. It looks more like printing ink. I think next time I might use a bigger plexiglass. <coughs> There we go. That looks better. So to get a dark area on the bottom, I, I don't necessarily want a rectangle, you know, because I've got these organic shapes. So what if we just cut another mask? It's got kind of a curvy edge and made a sort of a curved shape on the bottom that's dark. Just gives it more dimension, maybe. And that's kind of a preview of the area that I want to print on. Again, we're using my mask. I'm just going to hold it with my fingers. The super simple methods here. Place it down. Just make sure the newsprint doesn't move. There we go. It's not, it's really pretty easy. All right, we got a dark there. So I like this because it's kind of um, reminding me of a landscape a little bit, you know, kind of like a big mountain or atmosphere. Yeah, I like that, it's interesting. The black ink I might have put on a little bit heavy. So if that ever happens in the corners, it's not visible to you on camera, but I could tell it was a little bit heavy on the corners the black. So you can always take your scrap paper and just kind of, you know, just remove a little bit so it looks more transparent like the rest of the print. You know, you want everything to kind of look like it goes together. Okay, nice. I might touch that up a little bit when it's dry, but it looks pretty good. And then I realized I have extra black, so maybe I can make a one last print with, with the remaining black ink because we don't like to waste our ink. That is for sure. So we're making a final one. Now the ink had sat there for a few minutes, which should in theory be okay. But sometimes, depending on the climate in your studio, it might actually be a little bit dry. And um, I think that's what is happening here, but I'm not aware of it yet. Sometimes the ink could start to dry on you a bit more than you anticipate. Okay, we're lifting up the background again to get the edge. Okay, that's a pretty good uh, print. And now here's where it may have dried a bit while I wasn't aware. Um, so then we're printing and in theory it should give me a good print on this paper, but I believe it had started to dry a little bit. I 
And when that happens, you'll think you get a print and then you don't get a print because whoops, it's staying on the gel plate. But if it stays on the gel plate like that, I can try one more time with a little more force to see if I can transfer it, but I pretty much know it's not going to work. Yeah, so I'm going to get a partial print, and that is because my ink dried a little bit more quickly than I thought. It's hard to give you a formula as to when that happens, just sometimes it does. So, it's, although it's a cool ghostly image, I might want to do something with that ink that's on the plate that's dry now. So I'm thinking about an experiment. You can come along with me and see if it works. The experiment is to see if I can lift that dried ink off onto a new print. And I have done with this with acrylic paints before, but I have never done it with block printing ink. So we'll see if it works. Here's where we switch and we combine using the block printing ink with the basic acrylics. So now, counterintuitively, you want to let that fully dry on the plate. I know it was dry, but I really want it to be dry now. So I will make sure that that image is dry. When I touch it, it doesn't come up on my fingers. And as you can see, I'm adding some Liquitex basic acrylic paints. This could also be Amsterdam or any soft kind of basic paint. Uh, should work. So we're actually going to apply these to this plate and see if we can get a print. Okay, so I got my printmaking paper ready. I'm going to apply a dab of two colors. You could use one if you're not sure. I usually use about a blueberry sized uh, dollop and I think I'm going to do a kind of a gradation so that's why I'm doing it horizontally like that and just kind of a rough blend of colors. You don't want to over uh, over handle this. Very light, no pressure. Just a thin layer of acrylic paint on top of our dried block printing ink. And here we go. Let's see if it works. We want that wet paint to engage with the dried ink and kind of combine and be lifted off onto the paper. So cross your fingers. Here you use a little bit more pressure. You want to make sure that it's really engaged. You can even let it sit a minute or two. You can tell if it's working sometimes when you lift a corner. You can take a peek. And if it's not lifting, then just wait five minutes or ten. And I'm taking a peek. I can see some of the ink is on the plate, but it's working for the most part. I could have waited another five minutes, but I'm impatient, so I decided to go. It's working. Okay, it's a rough grunge type of image, but I like it. I like the kind of ghostly, grungy look. But that shows you that that can work, that technique I just showed you. So if your ink, block printing ink dries, do this trick of the adding the acrylic ink. 